So my name is Mrs. James, Susan James, and I've been at Mohican School probably longer than you've been alive, since about 2001. When were you guys born? <laughs> So I think sometime next September, you're going to be coming to Mohican Outdoor School. And that is about an hour and a half away from here. So it's a little bit of a trip. Has anybody ever been maybe camping at Mohican State Park or canoeing in Robertville on the Mohican River? That's where you're going to go, and is in that area. So as I go along, I know some of you are going to think, oh, I want to ask this question. Kind of store it away in your mind, and then at the very end, I'll allow some time for questions. That way we can get through this a little bit faster and allow more time for questions. Deal? You your plan? Okay. So it's a resident program. That means that you're going to be spending the night at Michigan School. Yes. Now that might be a new experience for some of you. And so, as we go along, I want you to pay attention to some of the pictures of the places where you'll have classes and where you'll be sleeping in the evening. Uh, Ms. Dunlap, what, what length of session did you sign up for? I, I say, well, how long? Five days. So you're going to arrive on Monday and leave on a Friday, and I'm really pleased because that's going to be the best kind of experience. It is a time, boys and girls, for you to grow. Now, yes, your parents are going to be there, and you're going to have a Mohegan adult with you in your dorm each evening, but you're going to have to be thinking about where you need to be at different times, and you're not going to have mom and dad or grandma and grandpa there saying, make sure you get this or make sure you get that, because you're going to need to be thinking about what you need and getting it. Um, so it's going to be a big time for growing, and what a better time, I think, than sixth grade. So we do operate from September through May, and it's mostly good than sixth graders, but it will be just your school there next fall, and you will be one sixth graders then. Now, the next, that fourth line down, fourth bullet line down, says interdisciplinary, and that's a big word. Uh, but what that means is that our classes combine the different subjects together. So most of the time, we do have a math class, a math hike, um, which you might end up having as a class. But those other classes, let's say like water studies, it's going to combine science with math with language arts. So that's what it means by interdisciplinary. It has all of those subjects mixed in together. And we do have a website, and if you check our website, it will, uh, it's mohicanoutdoorschool.org. 
there are different uh, activities that go on throughout the year that you might be able to take advantage of getting down to see. So now where are we? I said it was about an hour and a half drive. If you've been down to Mohican area, then you know about where it is. Big thing to remember is we're not part of Mohican State Park. We're a private nonprofit. Uh, sort of like your church is a private organization. We're not church-based, but it's a private organization, a nonprofit. So back in 1961, and this goes back a very long ways because it's even before I was born, Mohican School was founded. And Mohican School was founded by Ron Reed, who has since retired, I think you can understand that, um, and his very favorite class was bird study. And you might say, well, what is there to learn about birds? But you know, as sixth graders, you're going to be learning about cells and cell systems and how things function within systems. And so there is a lot, actually, that you can learn about that with bird study. Besides the fun of hearing them sing and going to look for them. So we believe that environmental education is going to put you in the very best lab. Do you guys do science labs? And they're all indoors, aren't they? Yeah. Every single one of our science labs, with the exception of maybe one with microscope class, is outside. So we're going to be doing our science labs outside where you're working at school. And it's all going to be hands-on. So at this point, I'm going to start showing you some pictures. To the left is stream study. That's water study. Um, and this, I want you to notice, I want you to notice the bright pink boots. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have pink boots, but I am saying that you should have some waterproof boots because we have water throughout our entire campus. Our entire outdoor area has different bodies of water. And if you don't, if you do not have waterproof shoes on, your feet are gonna get wet. That's kind of a no-brainer. But wet feet, when you're hiking in wet shoes, your feet get pretty miserable. So please do make sure that you try to come up with some kind of waterproof boots, whether they're rain boots or waterproof hiking boots. Um, you have plenty of time now to start thinking about where you can either borrow those from somebody you know or pick them up at a, at a store. Um, the middle picture is an important picture because that shows a sidewalk. That is the only sidewalk we have. That is the only sidewalk we have. So when you're packing your clothes, boys and girls, I would recommend that you pack and say, two smaller duffel bags rather than one huge suitcase with wheels. Because wheels don't roll very well on gravel. Um, so I would not recommend using a big suitcase with wheels. I would recommend packing in some smaller bags that you can maybe carry one at a time and uh, get them into your door a little more effectively and uh, not have to drag them on the ground in the case of a big piece of luggage that's not going to roll very well. And then on the right, we do have a pond, and sometimes we'll do water studies there, or we'll look for reptiles and amphibians, or we'll go canoeing, or we might go fishing, lots of different things that we can use that pond for. That all depends on what your teachers decide you, they would like for you to do. And so this is a winter view, because we actually do have schools come to Mohican School in the winter. Lots of fun things we do in the winter, actually. But that is our lodge. And so I want you to notice that down towards the bottom, where you can see kind of a walkway that doesn't have much snow, that's our lower level. And then you see that big bank of windows. Kind of, it looks kind of in the middle, but that's upper, actually the upper level. That's where our dining room is. And all of our activities and classes stem out of this one building. So here's an inside view of that dining room. Um, it's a pretty big room. It can actually hold, gee, well over 200, sometimes 300 people uh, with weather receptions. Uh, with you, we expect maybe about 130, 130 maybe, um, students to be there. And so it'll be fairly full, but not totally full. Um, but that's kind of what the dining room will look like when you arrive next fall. Round tables with these really cool wooden uh, table center pieces that actually have cutouts of leaves on them. We'll learn about that a little bit more here in a minute. 
There's the lower level, and that is actually the two main rooms at the lower level. So up on the upper left is what we call Riverview. It's a game room. It's also a classroom space, but it's a game room. Now, you're not going to see any electronic games there, folks. We believe in classic games. The adults behind you are smiling and nodding their heads. Classic games like checkers and chess, ping pong, foosball, um, not hockey and sake. We have cards if you want to play cards or different board games. So when you have free time in the evening, when you have free time in the evening, you'll spend some of that free time in uh, the game room or in that next room. And you can't tell from here, but that room is called Kurt Crawford and it has two snakes, three water turtles, two damn tortoises, and currently several almost frogs, tadpoles that are almost frogs. Um, so that actually, that room has animals that you can actually handle. So if you want to handle a snake or a turtle, you have that opportunity. If you don't want to, you don't have to. We never make people touch the live animals. If, if you're afraid of that, that's fine. We understand that. Okay, so this building is your door. So now you're going to say, well, that looks like it's just one building. Are we all going to be in the same building together? And even though it has one roof, there's actually four separate dorms under that one roof. So if you look, look at the stairs clear closest to us in the picture. Around to the right is the entrance to the lower girls' dorm. So there are two dorms that are low and two dorms that are above them. And so that whole wing, that triangle-shaped part of the building, there's another part of the building just like it on the other side of the stairs and, and the sunlights. So that's actually what you see is two of the dorms, but there's actually two more dorms on the far end. And so that's where all of you will be. Now, if you're bringing about 130 students, there will be four dorms. So two boys' dorms and two girls' dorms. And you might say, well, how do we know who we're going to be sleeping with? Well, that's up to your teachers. In fact, you'll be in four different kinds of groups while you're at Mohegan School. And the dorm is just one of them. And your teachers will decide who is best to be with whom. So here's some more pictures of your dorms. So I'll wait for good listeners. And you guys have been doing a really good job of quieting yourselves here and there. I really appreciate that. So in the upper left-hand corner is just, it looks like a picture of windows. Each dorm has a setup like this to where there's kind of stair steps and big windows for you to look out your dorm. Um, and those stair steps uh, are a great place to hang out and play a game of cards or checkers late in the evening. Um, or that's if we need to have a meeting with the, everybody in your dorm, that's where we have that meeting. Down below that is a picture of the bunks. And those bunk beds are wooden construction. And I want you to notice they do have rails on the top. But here's what you need to hear, boys and girls. We do have some, some limitations on who can sleep on the upper bunks. If you've ever sleepwalked before, you cannot sleep on an upper bunk. And let me tell you why. I want you to, uh, you probably can't tell from here. The floors are all concrete. So can you imagine what a bad experience that would be if you were a sleepwalker and you fell out of an upper bunk? Would not be the way I want you to remember when you in school. So with that said, if you have any kind of really serious illness or any history of sleepwalking, we're going to ask you to sleep on, expect you actually to sleep on the lower bunk. And, and that's where your parents will let us know what conditions uh, we need to be watching for. Down below that is a picture of cubbies. That's an example of four cubbies, actually, four spare cubbies that are all there together. Next to each bed, there is a cabinet with two cubbies. And so every person with the bed has a cubby to store in their luggage and clothing. And sometimes people bring pictures of their family members or a stuffed animal. Um, that's your space to store things. 
Um, another view from the outside, I want you to notice on the middle right, that's a picture of the shower space in each of the dorms. There are six showers. And each shower has two curtains. Okay, so we have private curtains, very private curtains, because there's two curtains uh, for each shower. Very private showers. Um, and we have a very strict rule that when somebody's in the shower, there's no messing around with curtains. And I think you can all understand that. Uh, because we want people to feel safe. We want you to feel safe when you're there. And you're not going to feel necessarily safe if you think somebody's going to pull the curtain open on you, right? Uh, that would be a quick trip home. We have a zero tolerance policy on that. So I want you to know, though, that you can come to Mohegan School and know that you have your space respected. Uh, that's really important to us. And then down below is uh, right opposite of where those cur the, the curtains are showing in that picture is the, the sink area for your bathroom. Um, looking on down in the middle, I want you to notice that uh, we have dorm staff that stay in the dorms with you, and they are at least 19 years old, so we don't have any high school students working in the dorm. In fact, we don't have any high school students working with us at all. Everybody that works for Mohegan School has to be background checked, just like the teachers and staff here at your school. That's what keeps you safe, right? Everybody has to have those background checks. Well, it's the same thing at Mohegan School. Everybody, whether they work in the office or in the kitchen or in maintenance or teaching you, everybody has those background checks. Hot and cold running water is in your dorm, so you don't have, how many, has anybody here been to a, a summer camp? Did that summer camp have a different building where you had to go take showers? Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't have that. The showers are all part of your dorm. So each of the four dorms has its own bathroom with showers and restrooms. So hot and cold running water goes to your dorm. We will not need that floor heat in September, though. At least I surely hope that we will not have to have floor heat in September. It seemed like we needed it in May. Okay, your teachers are going to be staying in a building that is literally like a stone's throw away from your building. So you saw a picture of your dorm, right? And just down or uphill from your dorm is their dorm. And what's really cool is that there's a, a phone intercom system between your dorms and the teacher dorm. So, so, if you start not feeling good, right? let's say bedtime or before bedtime, after bedtime, if you start not feeling good, the Mohican staff member can just pick up that phone intercom, call up to your teacher's dorm and say, Joey's not feeling well, could you come down? Oh yes, they pick up the phone. No. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. If the phone is ringing and the adult in your dorm doesn't hear it ringing, I want you to answer it just like you would at home. Hello? Because it might be me calling to say that Steve forgot to take his nighttime medicine. So if the adult cannot answer it or asks you to answer it, then it's appropriate to answer the phone. But remember, it's an intercom system, so it's not going to dial off campus. It just dials to the different buildings on campus. Now, one of the things that students always wonder about is, will I like the food? Raise your hand if you're worried about whether or not you like the food. Yep. So let me tell you some of the favorite foods that Miss Oswald fixes. One of the favorites is Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes and gravy. Ingredients. That's one of the favorites. In fact, there is a school in Columbus every year when I go to visit them. The students ask, will there be Salisbury steak, Mrs. James? And I say, I'll make sure that there is. So I just heard somebody say, I don't like. If we're serving a food that you don't like, we always have something else that you can choose from. We always have apples and oranges available. We always have, it's a peanut butter substitute called wild butter. And boys and girls, I had a sandwich with that wild butter. It tastes just like peanut butter. 
But because it's not peanut product, it keeps your, your friends that have peanut allergies very safe. So you always have the choice of making a wild butter sandwich with jelly. You always have the choice of apples and oranges. We always have, a, at the lunch and supper meals, we have a salad, pardon me, a salad table with at least iceberg and usually also spinach lettuce as a, an option. Breakfast meals, we have yogurts and cheese sticks out, and we have cold cereal and hot oatmeal. In addition to whatever she's made, you know, it might be pancakes, it might be French toast sticks, um, it's hard telling from day to day. It might be scrambled eggs. Every day is a different menu. Now, raise your hand if you're still worried about food. Fair. That's fair. Okay, now, let me tell you that if you have a food allergy or a food intolerance, let's say you're lactose intolerance or like me, gluten intolerant, it's going to be really important that in August, your parent needs to call Mohegan School. Because the only way we can be prepared for you is if we know that you're coming. And so the best way for us to know that you're coming is for your parent to call Mohegan Outdoor School and talk to our food services manager and we'll make sure that you have the food that you need. If you have a food allergy, let's say like a peanut allergy or some other kind of allergy where you could really be uh, very sick if you have had the food, you're going to need a, a second form filled out by your doctor. Okay, so we want to make sure that you're well taken care of and that you have the foods that you need. Okay, can you guys help me out with that? I don't need to ask who has food allergies, but if you, you know who you are, if you have a food allergy, help us out and make sure we know that you're coming. Let's see, while you're there, you are going to be challenged to change your ways. How many of you leave food on your plate on a regular basis? Uh-huh. And we're going to challenge you to not waste food. We're going to challenge you to have the lowest waste possible. Would you believe me if I told you that every year we have a school come and they usually bring about 80 or 90 students, so probably a little bit fewer than you do, or that you will. And uh, that school stays for the entire week, just like you're going to, Monday to Friday. And most of the years that they come, they have zero pounds of food waste. What? And they don't cheat. They don't use their napkin to wipe their plate off. Uh, they're not cheating in any way. They truly have zero pounds of food waste because they think really carefully about what they put onto their plate before they do it. So they make sure that they only put on their plate what they know they can eat. Now here's the other cool thing though, boys and girls. Do you guys have like a line that you have to go through to get your food here? We don't do it that way at working in school. We have family style eating. So remember those round tables? You're going to be sitting in a round table and at each meal, a different person is going to take turns going to the kitchen to get the food for the table. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Here's what else is different. If, let's say you have, um, sometimes you'll have like chicken legs, fried chicken legs. Oh, it's, it's actually baked, not fried, but you get the, the idea. Or let's go back to that Salisbury steak meal. Let's say your table runs out of mashed potatoes. Your food hopper, that person that brought the food out from the kitchen, your food hopper could take that bowl back to the kitchen and say, may I have more mashed potatoes, please? And they will dish out some more mashed potatoes. You run out of Salisbury steak. May I have more Salisbury steak? And they're gonna give you more Salisbury steak. So it's, you're not limited to one serving. Now do you see why putting small portions on your plate works? Because you can always get more. So start with small amounts, and then you can get more as you, as you know that you have room in your stomach for it. So that's our food waste challenge. I'll be very interested to see how you guys do with that. So on your first day, you're going to arrive on a bus, I assume a school bus, and you're going to see that shelter house. 
Now you, do you guys know that as a shelter or as a pavilion? Pavilion. Then we'll use that word pavilion. You're going to, your bus will pull up to that pavilion and then everyone's going to work together to get the luggage out of their buses. And then you're going to be able to take your luggage to your door. And somebody from Mohican School, probably Mr. James, will be out there directing you where to go so that you know where to take your luggage. On that first day, you need to be dressed kind of differently than what I'm seeing here. Do you notice how I have long pants on? You notice how I have closed toed shoes with socks? And I have short sleeves on? That's what you need to have on. You may not wear shorts. Let me tell you why. Have you guys ever been hiking out in the woods before? Okay, so you probably know then that in the woods there's this plate called Multiflora Rose that has sticker bushes all over it. And out in the woods there might be some crawling insects that could crawl on you. So there might be poison ivy, very good. So, boys and girls, this is not a if you want to type of thing. Really, truly, we have a dress code, and it's explained in the paperwork that will go home with you. Um, short sleeves, we don't do sleeveless. So, short sleeves, we don't do capri length pants, girls. We don't do shorts, we do long pants. And I would highly recommend real socks, not footy socks because real socks are gonna come up over your ankles and protect your, your, the lower part of your leg a little bit better from those sticker bushes. So we have good reasons why we want you to dress that way. They're for your safety, those reasons are. So make sure that you're dressed, ready to go to class when you get off the bus. So don't dress like you are right now, some of you, and say, oh, I'll just change clothes when I get there, because there will not be time to change clothes. Once you get off the bus, you're going to get your luggage into your dorm, you're going to eat lunch, and bam, we're off and going. So uh, come ready to learn, because boys and girls, even though, and I have no idea whether your teachers have referred to it as going to camp, it looks like a camp, doesn't it? But guess what? You're going to be there during a week of school. So it really is a school program. And in fact, a lot of the people that work at Mohegan School are actually school teachers. So this really is a school program. You need to come ready to learn in a more fun setting. So you do need something to write on, like a folder or a notebook. You do need a pencil or a pen, something to write with. You need those waterproof boots that I talked about, and if you guys can manage to, to get some name tags pulled together, that would be really helpful, so that I can actually call you by your name and not just hang you in the pink shirt. Um, so come prepared. Look at the last line. Make sure you are dressed in layers of clothes. I think this past week illustrates it better than anything. Would you ever dream that it would, did it snow here yesterday? It snowed at Mohegan School yesterday. So, we never know what Ohio weather's gonna hold. I would highly suggest that you're dressed sort of like what I am with short sleeves, and then have a sweatshirt and a lightweight jacket. And make sure that you have something in case of rain, because if it's raining, we're still outside in our classes. Did everybody catch that? If it rains, we're outside with our classes. The only thing that would take us inside is thunder and lightning or really high winds. So be prepared to be outside no matter what. So remember I talked about four different groups that you'll be in? One of them was the dorm group, right? I talked to you about that. That's that middle bottom. Those young ladies are cleaning their dorm. Because while you're at Mohegan School, you are going to be responsible for keeping that dorm halfway cleaned up. I'm not going to expect it every day to be spit spot, but you do have to keep your things put away. You do have to sweep the floors each day um, just to keep it cleaned up. One of the other groups is your table group. We saw that briefly, right? When we saw the picture of the dining room. 
Another group, and it's kind of hard to see over there on the right, the lower right, but that young man is sweeping the dining room floor after one of the meals. And so each of you is going to be assigned a community responsibility. Sometimes, you know, usually I have about eight kids that help feed the outside animals. And you might say, oh, I want to do that. But guess what? That also includes cleaning their cages. Yes, so keep that in mind as you're trying to convince your teachers what group to put you in, um, that all of them have plus signs and minus signs. <laughs> um, so it might be feeding the animals, it might be sweeping a floor after a meal, or it might be setting tables for the meal. It might be one of those jobs called food manager that helps take care of all the dirty dishes after each meal. Or it might be feeding inside animals, restocking the store with, with chips and juice. Um, lots of different things that we might need help with because it takes everybody in the community working together to, to keep the community running well, right? Think about your school here. Do you guys have home monitors? No? Are they talking about for next year? Do you, in your home room, in your home room, do you have people that have jobs within your room? Oh. I hear somebody saying yes. So I bet at least some of those classrooms do. It keeps your, your homework community running well when each person has a job. Top right is a class. That particular class I think is water studies based on what I see him holding. So let's see some pictures of classes. Lower right would be water studies. So that young man is actually looking a tiny little insect in the water. Did you know you can tell how healthy water is by the kinds of insects that live in it? Some of you do, some of you don't. You're going to learn more about that if you have water studies class. Um, second from the left is astronomy. Next would come geology. Oh, the one on the right. Clear to the right is a very big favorite, GPS. How many of you have ever gone geocaching? We have 6, 12, 18 geocache boxes at Mohegan School. They're private, so nobody else is allowed to come in into Mohegan School's property to, to look for them. We also have 16 GPS units that we use to teach you how to geocache. Now, you might say, well, that's fine. How is that school? Well, guess what? That GPS technology is used throughout science. It's used um, travel. It's used with any kind of transportation industry. That technology is used in a lot of work. So we're teaching you the basics, and then you can take that further once you hit middle school and high school. And then up above is shelter building, which is a lot of fun. Now, you're going to arrive on Monday, you're going to leave on Friday, so at least two of the three days that you are there, and possibly all three days, you will have a time in the afternoon that we call option time. So each day goes like this, and I do have a schedule later in here, but I'm going to talk you through this. We get you up at 7 in the morning. We have breakfast at 8. Some of you do jobs in the morning after breakfast, and then at 9.15 we have class. Then we have lunch. Then you have an hour with your teachers from your school. Then you have afternoon class. And then after the afternoon class, we have this time called option time, where you get to choose the activity that you do. The classes that you have, the teachers get to choose that. But the option times, you get to choose which one you do. And I usually try to have a craft going on because some of us maybe aren't really excited about being in the outdoors 100% of the time. Is there anybody here that can relate to that? You're just kind of like, eh. Yeah, I've got a really honest teacher back there too. I like that. You know, it, it's great to go out and have a hike, but I really like to just kind of sit inside and, and just relax. And so that craft time is a great time for that. It might be sand painting or rock art or some other kind of nature art. Who knows? 
Um, some of you might really like to burn some energy. So you see up, uh, the upper left, that's pillow hockey. Sort of like field hockey, only with Nerf. You know how, how soft the Nerf ball is? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's it's a spongy end to that stick, so it's not a hard stick. Um, so sometimes we'll have, oh, let's see, predator prey, or kick the can, or, or pillow hockey, or frisbee golf, something outside where you can really run. Anybody like that, where you like to really run a lot? Okay, so we'd have something for you. You might go on a hike where you're looking for reptiles and amphibians. Or you might go to our animal care center outside where we have three rabbits, two goats that will be just a year old when you get there, and we have a pig named Wilbur. Um, so, and then depending on whether you have archery as a class or not, you might have archery as an option time activity. And again, that is really up to your teachers. But the whole point of Option Time Boys and Girls is to let you have a choice in the activities that you do. And there are some of the pictures of our animals. Now, I do need to update my picture of the goats. That is not the goats that you will see. The goats that you will see are two little pygmy goats that are all black. Um, far smaller than those two, but everybody else is correct. Um, we do have a hawk and an owl that we use in a class called raptors. And there's a picture of two of the three water turtles and some of our rabbits. Okay, so when I last left off on your schedule, we left off at option time. Option time is after when? After the class. Very good. Some of you were listening. Funny how I sneak that trick question in there, huh? Okay, so we were listening. We have afternoon class, then we have option time. Then we have, and this is important, and some of you might go, oh, I don't want to do that. We have rest period. Now, boys and girls, rest period is not a waste of time because you will be going and going and going from 7 in the morning until 10 at night. You really do need to let your body rest. So during rest period, I'm going to lay the groundwork right now. During rest period, we really do expect you to lay down on your bed and rest. I know that when I'm in there supervising rest period, I read a story. When Mr. James is in the dorm with rest period, he actually gets his guitar out and plays. So it's not like we're expecting you to have this really painful half an hour of nothingness. We just want you to lay down and rest. You can read a book if you want. You can play solitaire if you want. But you may not talk to your neighbor. You may not pass notes. We want you to rest. After rest time, we have supper. And then we have an evening class. <coughs> Again, more reason to have that rest period because we have an evening class. And then we have social time. Now social time, remember how I showed you the picture of the game room? Yeah. And I said that you would have a free time in the evening? Yeah. That's social time. Social time, half an hour will be time in the game room. Um, and you can see we have a library that is a little quieter spot to play some board games. You saw the game room earlier. But those three young ladies are sitting in the game room too. And then half an hour of an activity. And that activity might be a campfire, or it might be a bingo game, or it might be one of our, our activities that helps you to get to know each other. Because even though you guys, how many of you have known each other since kindergarten? Yeah, I understand that. My kids knew everybody from kindergarten too. But you might, there might be people that you don't know Ms. Dunlap, does your middle school combine several elementaries together? It's just here, just moves out. There still can be people that move in um, over the summer. So, or it might be that you don't necessarily know everybody here as well as you could. So there's lots of things that you can learn during a mixing act, mixer activity. But the whole point is that last hour of, of activity 
is kind of more of a fun activity. Now, during that social time activity, we do have a store that is open. Now, boys and girls, listen carefully. The point of you coming to Mohegan School is to learn about yourselves, to learn about the outdoors. When we go on vacation, sure, it's nice to, to get some kind of a souvenir to remember that vacation, right? But is the whole point of this Mohegan trip to spend money? No, it's to learn about ourselves, to learn about the outdoors. But we do have a souvenir store that you can buy some things uh, if you're wanting some souvenirs. Do you have to buy souvenirs? No, you do not have to buy souvenirs. But it's there if you want to. With that said, there is a price list on our website right now. It will be updated probably Miss Dunlap in August with any kind of price changes. And we also sell snacks in the evening. We have different kinds of potato chips and we have cheeses. The goldfish, goldfish, let me rephrase that. And we have juice boxes. So each evening you are allowed to buy one chip and one juice box. I don't anticipate that that price will change. Right now the bag of chips is 75 cents and a juice box is 75 cents. Somebody do some quick math. $1.50. So if you wanted, if you know that you're used to having a snack before you go to bed, and you know, oh, mom and dad, I know that I really want a snack each night. What's a dollar fifty plus a dollar fifty? Three dollars, because we have four nights of that, right? So three dollars and three dollars is six dollars. So if you knew that you wanted snacks each night, then you would want to to have six dollars in your bank. <coughs> Notice that I did not say you want to bring $6. I said you want $6 in your bank account. Because boys and girls, we do not want you to have any money in your pocket when you come to Bohemian School. If you know that you want to buy souvenirs or snacks, you're going to need to listen to your classroom teachers next fall and get that money turned in to either your teachers or the office and they're going to write one big check to cover all of that. And your teachers are going to have a spreadsheet, a piece of paper on the computer, imaginary paper on the computer, that will have your name and the amount of money that you brought in. And each day, Mohegan School will keep that bank account updated so that we can tell you how much money you have left. Now, I don't want you to depend on us. You will need to have one page in your notebook where you're keeping track of how much money you have left. Because in the real world, when your parents have a checking account, they really do have to keep track of how much money's in that checking account, right? So that they don't overdraw, so that they don't spend too much money. You need to do the same thing. So do not bring cash with you, but if you want to spend money at Mohegan School, you're gonna send it into school and it will be in an account for you that you'll keep track of how much money is in there. And we will too. Hold those questions just a little bit longer. So we have social time, and then we're going back to our dorm around 9 o'clock, and we're going to have lights out at 10 o'clock. Now, I see a few miles from what really is 10 o'clock when the lights go out, and we're really pretty strict about that because you will have been going and going and going and going since 7 o'clock in the morning. When I started at Mohegan School 15 years ago, somebody told me that you kids would be walking 7 or 8 miles each day. And I said, there's no way they're walking 7 or 8 miles a day. No way. And then guess what? A year plus ago, I bought this Fitbit. And I got it set up so that I'm fairly certain it's accurate. On a day that I'm teaching classes to students, guess how many steps I put in? 15,000 steps. And that is about seven or eight miles. That's a lot. I guarantee you that the first night, some of you will have trouble getting to sleep. It's a new bed. We get that. 
But that second night, you are going to be so tired that you're going to say, I want to go on to bed before 10 o'clock. And that will be just fine. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in new places, I don't like it to be totally dark. And we don't want your room dorm to be totally dark either. So there are night lights that will be left on. The Mohican teacher will be in there with you all night to take care of any problems that you might have. Um, and all the doors are locked. You know, boys and girls, we've never had any problem, not been one, never had any problem with people that didn't belong at our campus, but we still keep the doors locked. Just because it's, do you keep the doors locked at your house? At night? Yeah, so do we. And I'm not worried about somebody coming in, but I still lock the doors at night. So that's what we do at Mohegan School. And on that last day, you're going to load everything up, get it out of your door. We'll have one last inspection of your door, and you will be getting ready to go home with lots of good memories. So what do you need? Everybody good listeners right now? Because this is important. You're going to have a packing list. And that is actually available on our website right now that you guys could get to. It's a public web page. And uh, that packing list is, is on that public web page. You do need to bring bedding. You need to bring a pillow. You need to bring towels and bathroom items because this is not a hotel. Okay? What we're providing is what you saw in that picture, a bunk bed with a mattress. So you need to bring your own bedding. You need to bring lunch on the first day. Okay, so don't forget and say, oh, we get all of our meals provided. Well, on that first lunch, you need to have a packed lunch. You need a good pair of waterproof boots. You need a raincoat or a poncho. Because remember what I said we would be, even if it's raining? Outside. Have your initials or names on everything. You know what? Two, three weeks ago, we had two schools from Columbus attend Mohican School, and one of those students left a book bag with a really nice Columbia jacket in it, a school book was in it, and the teacher called right away and said, have you found a book bag? And I said, no, I haven't. The parent called, have you found my child's book bag? No, I haven't. And then, a week ago, I found it. Wow. It was in our staff area. I'm not sure why that child's book bag was in our staff area. Hmm. I'm not sure. In any case, last Thursday, I happened to be in Columbus, and I dropped that book bag off at the school. Now, there's a lot of schools up in this area that come to Mohegan School, and we do visits like this throughout the year. If you have your name on your things, and I find, I'm the one in charge of all the lost and found, if we find it, I'll make every effort to get it back to you. Whether I drop it off at your school or we end up shipping it to your parent, doesn't matter how we get it back. But if your name's not on the, your things, I can't know whose it is. Do you guys get that? If your name isn't on your belongings, we cannot get it back to you. So make sure your name is on everything. And a name tag. Please do bring a name tag. Please do not bring food to keep in your door. Did everybody hear that? Because I don't know about you, sometimes I'm sleeping in the dorm with girls. I do not like the idea of anything crawling on me in the, in the night. And the way we keep insects and mice and things like that out of the dorm is we keep food out of the dorm. So there's only one circumstance I can, if, if any of you have diabetes, you would be allowed to carry food. But no one else would be. You're not allowed to carry food with you. You don't need food, guys. We're going to feed you very well three times a day. And if you're still hungry in the middle of the morning or the middle of the afternoon, we can get you an apple or an orange. Don't worry about that. We'll make sure your bellies are full. You're not allowed to keep food in your suitcase, your book bag, or your dorm. Leave electronic devices, including cell phones, at home. I will tell you that most cell phones go dead pretty quick. If you've ever been down to Mohican State Park, who's, who's been to Mohican State Park? Mr. James and I like to camp there. Do you have any cell reception there? No. You don't. 
When we camp at Mohegan State Park, there is zero reception. Now, we do have a little bit for certain carriers, but you know what? If you need to go to a call, really, really need to get a hold of your parents, or your parents really, really need to get a hold of you, we have a landline, and that's what we use, just like your school has a landline. So if there's an emergency, we'll get a hold of whoever we need to. But you need to leave your cell phones at home. That, again, is a zero tolerance. So do not even think of bringing that cell phone. Um, any kind of aerosol cans, leave those home. And let me tell you why. Because, uh, you know, we know that the CFCs are not in those cans anymore, so it's not an environmental reason. It's that sometimes, don't get offended, guys, but you're still kids. And sometimes kids accidentally spray people when they're meaning to spray on their arm, let's say it's an insect repellent, and it gets into somebody's eyes by accident. Yeah, it was an accident, but it still really hurts that person's eyes. So any kind of uh, sprays, you need to stay home. If you feel like you need insect repellent, get the wipes. Leave expensive cameras and watches home. I personally have fallen with an expensive camera, and it was broken forever. And I could have cried. And I have seen students cry when they have lost things like that. Um, let's, let's keep it a happy time at Mohegan School and keep expensive things at home. Money we've already talked about, and anything not permitted at your school is not permitted at Mohegan School. Did everybody catch that? If it's not allowed at your school, it's not allowed at Mohegan. So don't think, oh, I'm going to camp, I'm going to take a pocket knife with me. <laughs> oh, I have had students do that. You can laugh, but I've had students realize their error once they got there and thought for sure they were going to get expelled. Now, if you showed up with a knife here, it would be a serious talk with your principal, wouldn't it? Very serious talk. So keep in mind that whatever rules you have here, apply at Mohegan School. I'm just about done. We already talked about the daily schedule. And guess what? There's the last page.